baby. Damn it, double or nothing. <laughs> to your paycheck, buddy. It's seven months today. That's incredible, I'm proud of you. I get another. Telling you less is just trouble every which way over here. <laughs> that sounds like gunshots. Call the cops. Keep your hands where I can see them, all of you. It's clear. No windows, no doors. What do you people want with us? Our fight is out there. And unfortunately, it's your fight now, too. They're barricading us in. Hope y'all are nice and comfy. What may come as a revelation to some of you is that there is a monster among you. What's he mean, monster? Now all you gotta do is let us know you're ready to give him up. The clock, she is a ticket. We can't let him trap us in here. You think they're just gonna leave witnesses? We need to do something. This wasn't part of the deal. Tell me the truth. I saw him dead in the eyes. The time is up. Hello and welcome back to the On The Slab Horror Show, the show that brings you each and every Friday night. Why do we do this on a Friday night? The lads aren't here, so I'll answer the question myself. We do it on a Friday night, because Friday night is horror night. Um, Again, when we have guests from the US, we tend to explain it to them. So on our free to air TV, we used to have a channel called Channel 4. And on a Friday night at 10 o'clock at the end of the watershed, we used to get a classic horror movie. Could have been anything. Ranged from Texas Chainsaw to Nightmare on Elm Street. Bit of everything. Nice. I seen the Mutilator there one time. And I was hooked on that one as well. <laughs> yeah. So you got a bit of everything. So we put the show out at 10 o'clock as a little tribute to that. Nice. Because it's growing up in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s for me. It was great. Oh, Got to yeah. see all the classics. <laughs> all the classics. Um, but as you can see, the lads aren't here tonight. Again, unfortunately, work and prior commitments take precedent. And I get left. Well, I didn't get left. <laughs> I organized the interview, so... Uh, but tonight we're joined from someone from over the pond. It is a very talented director at the minute, not at the minute, but in general, um, with his new movie Craving, absolutely killing it um, from all the reviews that I've seen. And I actually had the pleasure of watching it and it was phenomenal. This is director, Mr. Jason Horton. How are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Th thanks for taking the time out of your day to come on. I know it's only mid-afternoon for yourselves. Yeah, yeah, we're about, uh, it's about 6 p.m. here. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's a little after that for us, but yeah, sure. So, <laughs> such is life. Right. Sacrifices have to be made. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but uh, I mean, say, so, like, what I said there in the intro, Craven killing it in the ratings yeah the reviews the response for it has been really good you know it seems like uh the uh, general public is really liking it and uh we've got some really great uh critical reviews absolutely but just before we get into craven tell us a little bit about yourself how did you get started in film writing film directing sure. Yeah, so I, I was always a, a movie kid, but um, I was from uh, the Midwest over here, and there's not a lot of like filmmaking going on there, you know, or at least there wasn't back then, you know, and it didn't seem like a real feasible option. So you know, I kicked around a little bit in my early twenties. Um, it was kind of a ne'er do well, and then I ended up uh, going straight and uh, went back to college. And in college in uh, New Orleans, I kind of discovered uh, film production there. And people were, you know, like uh, there were a lot of people that would come through that were working in the industry. And then it all of a sudden didn't seem like such an impossible thing. So, you know, I, 
decided to study film, you know, went through college. And then the summer that I graduated, I, you know, got some credit cards, a little bit of money I saved up from working at Starbucks and me and a couple of buddies made our first feature in uh, 2003. Nice. What a, what a city to, to start in. Obviously oh, steeped yeah. in, in history and traditions, but it, it, there's a lot of horror traditions there. Oh and, yeah, like the, the gothic stuff. And oh man, it's just such a, you know, I've lived many places in the country, but like New Orleans, like it just has such a specific personality. Like, like you can smell it, you can feel it. Like, I, I, I've, not, I've never lived anywhere quite like it. It's like a, it's like a big, it's like a small, big city. You know, like it, it has the rhythm of a small town, but it's a, you know, it's a major city. It, it's I really was, cool. I was very close to booking going there for my honeymoon. Uh, um, it is, it is a place that I want to see. Yeah, um, yeah. I think, I think it's something everybody should experience. You know, at least once. You know. Like everyone was, everyone was obviously slagging me, being like, "Oh, you only want to go over for Mardi Gras." So I'm hardly yeah, going yeah. over to. I'm hardly going over with my wife on my honeymoon for Mardi Gras. <laughs> um, and the, the, it was actually the lady we booked the holiday with kind of turned us off. She said two weeks is too long in New Orleans, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to go to Florida for just a week, so we ended up going there for the two. But That's, I'll get there. Yeah, yeah. But as it says, you get a lot of great horror traditions and horror movies even coming out of, of New Orleans and stuff. Yeah. So it would have been a great place to to hone your craft. Yeah, it was it was cool. And I, I honestly, looking back on it, I wish I had chosen a project that showcased more of the city. Because, you know, my the movie that we did, it was called Rise of the Undead. And it was pretty much all set inside this, uh, like, security complex. You know, so it was real insular and every time we were outside it was like an apocalypse going on so you didn't really see much really it could have been shot anywhere we were just we just so happened to be in new orleans at the time ah sure look uh, i mean there could be worse things you know what i mean oh totally totally, yeah. totally. um I mean, but like the terms of new orleans like you get the you get like the graveyards that you see in all the tv shows and stuff so mm-hmm. it's an amazing place to film yeah, it sure is. Like I've done all kinds of music videos, and uh, like we used to shoot little proofs of concept and stuff. We've used the graveyards a bunch. Yeah, you see, you sort of see them in everything, don't you? It's the only it's in New Orleans. There's obviously a graveyard scene somewhere. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But um, like, as it says, you've gone back to college. You've come out. You've done your movie. So what? What's next for you then? Yeah, so I made the movie and uh, we sold it to a, a distributor called York Entertainment, who is pretty notorious uh, bad distributor. Um, I didn't know any better at the time. Um, anyway, we uh, we they distributed it. it. Was you know it wasn't like a theatrical release, but it you know got on VHS and DVD. It was like those days, and you know blockbuster Hollywood video, all that stuff. And I thought once that was done, we were like I was getting ready to move to Los Angeles. Uh, that was right around Hurricane Katrina time. I moved out. Oh, oh eight, oh nine, is it? Uh, oh five. Um, oh five. Or, well, I think it was like right, right before oh six. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. around there. <laughs> Somewhere around there. And uh, I moved to Los Angeles, and I thought that because I had made this movie and it got distributed, it was all we didn't make money off of it, but it was out there. And I thought that when I got to LA, everybody would be like you know, here's a job, kid, come direct our movies. And I just, I couldn't get a job at all in the industry when I first got there. Um, I ended up working at Starbucks again, which was my college job. I did that for a few years and I slowly started picking up jobs like editing, assistant editing. Uh, I had a camera, so I would shoot sometimes. And I ended up uh, convincing a producer on one of those shoots uh, to put a small amount of money into a zombie movie, uh, which I ended up making called uh, Edges of Darkness, and that was my that was my second movie. Nice. I, you can't pay now, zombie movie. The only thing yeah. is, you're a lot more. I'd say you're a lot more restricted, uh, and have to be more stringent with a budget on a mm-hmm. zombie movie because obviously oh, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of makeup and stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we made a little time. It was like twenty-five thousand dollars, I think, was the budget, and you know, it was, <laughs> it was, it was actually a really clever premise. Um, I just, I, you know, I was still kind of new. I just wish I had developed it more. 
but it was about a uh, vampire couple um, who uh, they end up it's during a zombie apocalypse so the zombies are eating all the people so the vampires are starting to starve and then and then they they end up bringing in this young girl that they're planning to you know feed off of for a while and she's another kind of creature that ends up you know turning the tables on them like it was a cool it was a cool idea it's you know it's a it's a very low budget movie i mean that's that's an original way of doing something i've never heard that being done in a film before yeah, and I and like the the way that the the creature worked. The girl that you know they would feed off her, and instead of getting stronger, it's almost like her blood was slowly poisoning them and making them weaker, and then you know <laughs> so she could turn the tables. But yeah, I, it was cool, and but it didn't, it it turned into an anthology. So there was that story. There was a story about a killer computer, and uh, there was another one about like the Antichrist. And it was all taking place in the same apartment complex during an apocalypse, a zombie apocalypse. Like that's what that's what tied it together. But they didn't really like, even though I intercut everything, the sequence, the people don't interact. You know, like it, like it's all happening at the same time, but it it doesn't. The stories don't affect each other. It's like it, that's a pretty cool idea. I yeah, have. and. Yeah, and you know what? Like, I was just kind of saying, well, it was kind of a, you know, GB movie or whatever. But, I mean, to this day, I still, like, it's on YouTube on channels. And, like, it gets hundreds of thousands of views and a lot of positive comments. Like, more than I would think, you know? I mean, like, I, I'll certainly check it out now once we're out, once we're finished here. Yeah. Um, as it says, I'll, I'll watch pretty much anything. <laughs> I've watched, I've watched yeah, yeah. some terrible, terrible movies over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, like and the me, entire. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. I was gonna say in the pantheon of you know everything, it's it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, like horror for me, it, it's the best genre of movies, mm -hmm. but it also has probably the worst movies. I think so. I just so many filmmakers like whether they like horror or not, it's like a horror movies their first thing almost always. Yeah, I, it, I, it I seems it to be the easy thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I, I have, I have, a, I think it would have been a lot easier to do a comedy or something. But I don't see, know. I, what I, what I'd say to that is the only thing with a comedy is you have to have someone with comedic timing. Yeah, totally, totally. It's a, yeah, yeah. Comedy is not easy either. Like the, um, theoretically, <laughs> mo most bad horrors you see now, you get two or three really good-looking girls. Right. Uh, probably a, a theoretically don't want to sound racist, but you get a black guy, you get a mm -hmm. big stocky guy. And then you get someone that thing, and you've got your general six people or whatever, yeah. and then you have some guy with some kind of mask, and off you go. Totally, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it seems to be the easiest way to do it. A lot of them are terrible, but yeah. I used to um, I used to work in Extravision, which was like Blockbuster and stuff. Oh, cool. And uh, we used to get five DVDs for five euro for five nights. And me and one of the lads used to go around and we'd find the worst DVDs we could find from the artwork <laughs> in the yeah, horror yeah. section and we'd take it and we'd rent them out and we'd watch them. And occasionally you'd find you'd find a couple of really yeah. good ones. Yep. Um, I remember those days. I, I, I worked at Blockbuster here in the States when I was uh, like 18, 18, 19. I was 19 when I started there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a good job. No, yeah, sorry. I was, I, no, it wasn't. I wasn't. I was 21. Yeah. I actually kind of miss that kind of work. <laughs> I do when I don't. I don't miss the dickhead customers. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess not. Yeah. That's the only thing. Retail, you get some dickhead customers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, we found some absolute belters in there. Uh, I found House. You know, this Sean Cunningham yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah, William Cat. Uh, yeah. And the amazing, like the amazing artwork is just a finger pushing the doorbell. Yep. It's so good. Uh, um, and yeah. we found a 2003 wrong torn with Eliza Dusku. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah that I like went the second that, one a little better, but. Ooh, uh, I know, I know. Henry it's Rollins. the size. Yes, I like it. I, I like, I like it. I, I know a lot of people don't, but I, I really do. I, so I do like it. So that that ended up going on to be my favorite franchise. Oh, really? Um, I, I know they're not great. After yeah. one or two, they're not great. Yeah. But they're fun and they're entertaining. That's true. I the, the, I think the last one I saw was the like prisoner like bus escape one. Oh, it's terrible. 
That's the worst yeah. one of the lot. It, it was it was watchable. I mean, kinda. It, it, so I say it's terrible. They're all kind of like that, but that's the worst one of the lot for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I go when I go through the rewatch, I get to three, and I do be like, oh. <laughs> um, I I I just love the characters in it, the three brothers, the Hilliker brothers. Right. But uh, if you get a chance, go and watch four. I have okay. I like I'd I'd rate it one four two. Okay, I'll try. Five, six, one, or five, six, two. Okay, yeah, I'm almost five, positive six, three. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Well, four, four is set up in an, um, in like an old mental hospital in the snow. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely haven't seen it. Yeah, um, it's good. They're good. Okay. Um, I found, and then we found an absolute belter in 2002's Dog Soldiers. Oh, f- love that movie. That is yeah. such a good movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I actually had the pleasure of sitting down with Neil Marshall a couple oh, of weeks wow. ago. That's great. Uh, like I got to sit there. So so far in the last six months, I've got to sit there with the director of two of my favorite, two, two, three of my favorite horror films. Obviously, uh-huh. Neil Marshall has done Dog Soldiers and The Descent, but I got oh, to man. sit down with with Buddy Cooper as well, who done The Mute later. Okay. Dang, but, uh, that's really sitting, cool. Sitting picking Neil Marshall's brain about dog soldiers and the lair. Oh, and stuff. yeah, man. And the descent. I, oh, yeah. man. He was on such a roll there. He still, I, I still, yeah, yeah. it's just phenomenal. Yeah, no, I like, I, his, I think his TV work has been great. See, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, so. Yeah, he's been, well, he did a couple of the bigger episodes of Game of Thrones. Yeah, I did watch that now, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the watchers, the watchers on the wall episode. I'm almost positive that was him. You can there's certain things he does, and you can just tell it's him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, we found that, and that for me now, and what I found a lot of people saying to me mm. is that is, in my opinion, and a couple of the others that do the show with us, is the greatest werewolf movie ever made. So I'm gonna ask you the question. I normally, I normally put it at the end. Mm, okay. But uh. American Werewolf in London or Dog Soldiers? Which one's better? You know what? I, I will agree with you, and I'll go Dog Soldiers. Um, I love I'm American at... Werewolf in London, but like Dog Soldiers is just like it, it's what I refer to as like muscular. It just it just it moves and it's engaging and it like I don't know, like I, like I said, I love American Werewolf in London, but I, Dog Soldiers is just a it's a knockout. It's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. Um. As it says, American Werewolf is my number two. Yeah. But uh, for me, Dog Soldier was phenomenal. But again, that's one of them ones that we picked up. Right. But um, we're getting a bit off target here. That was supposed to be at the end. But... <laughs> that's so all right. let's go. Let's go. We've made it to now, right? Mm. And you've now made Craving, which I remember hearing about this a little while ago into the back end of last year. Mm hmm. I think off a few people that I'd interviewed in the States, they were talking about it coming out. It was not when it was in the movie, but right. it was obviously people that are around the indie scene and they were telling me, wait for this to come out. It's going to be good. Then mm-hmm. obviously I connected with you on Facebook yeah, and you gave me the opportunity to watch it, which was, I do appreciate. Oh, no problem at all. And uh, so enlighten me. Where did this come from? So uh, Craving's an old script. I, I wrote it. Oh, man, probably around 2010, something like that. Um, Jesus, that old? Yeah, it's, it's old. Uh, the, like, when I, right after I did Edges of Darkness, it was like two years before I did my next movie. And so there was a period there where I was just like writing, 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 you know, scripts. So I have, I have like 15 still that I've never made. But uh, Craving, um, and I, it was called Feud back then. Um, or was it? I don't remember what it was called. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh Shoot, I'm sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. So, so you've wrote you've wrote it in 2010. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry where it came from, and it was really uh, like inspired. I'm you know I came of age in the 90s, so like I really liked the like like crime thriller like slash horror movie thing that was going on that like from dust till dawn kind of yeah. It's like like they start out like kind of criminals, but then in horror situations. You know, like like yeah. from dusk till dawn, how it had the flip in the middle. I, I think that's that's probably the the most outrageous film you'll see for that. Yeah, 
because yeah, totally. you have no idea what's coming from that. Yeah. And then and all just, of a sudden, bam. They're, in, they're in the titty twister, and then you're like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. 100%. If it's not if it's not the most Robert Rodriguez movie there is, <laughs> uh, totally. but then again we we've seen it again then la- the back in the last year with Barbarian as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbarian had a good had a good uh, tone shift in the middle as well. Yeah, yeah. I actually got I got to sit down with um, Matthew Patrick Davis who played uh, the mother. Oh wow! Yeah, and yeah. like that movie, not not many movies swerve me. That yeah. got me. Big time. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? It did me too. I had no. I didn't know anything about it going in. Yeah, so I was sitting watching it because it came out on Disney Plus for me, and my missus was upstairs and she came down, you now just as they go down into the tunnels, uh-huh. and she's like, "So Bill Skarsgård's the bad guy," and I was like, uh, "I think so. I think so." And then obviously that happens, and I was sitting there going, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> right. And then, yeah, it was of course, insane. what happens next is the first scene you see is Justin Long. And I turn to my missus and I says to her, I says, he's not going to be okay in this movie. I was like, <laughs> he's just not going to be okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we we, we sidetracked again. So yeah, that's cool. You're, all, you're going in, you're doing one of the, the mad swerves in the middle. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I finished uh, I finished writing it. Couldn't really get it made. Like at, at the time I wanted to raise like, you know, a million dollars to make it. So, you know, I started getting hired by some other companies to direct smaller movies. So I started doing that. I just kind of put the script aside. And then, you know, many years later, uh, I did a string of documentaries and I wanted to do another narrative feature. And I was like, what do I want to do? And I just kind of looking through my old scripts and, you know, this one just like stuck out to me. I was like, I really want to make that. So, you know, I approached Gregory Blair, who's a fellow writer, and he acted in the movie. He was Travis, the guy with the hat. Yeah, he and, was. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he did a rewrite on it because, you know, it had been through so many permutations at that point. I, like, I wanted fresh eyes on it. So he did a pass of it and then gave it back to me, and I did a pass of it. And we were like, okay, this is, this is the one we're going to make. And I had a little bit of equity into it, you know, money raised ahead of time and decided to do a crowdfunder to try to raise more. So was we that did that. Indiegogo or something, was it? Yeah, we did an Indiegogo and we raised uh, $64,000, I think. And then so we took that and the money that we had and, you know, jumped into production. I, like for me, I've said it a couple of times now when, when, we, when the conversation of Indiegogo comes up. Before we started getting guests, I'd never heard of it. Oh, really? Uh, so we don't have anything like that. We don't have a horror scene, really, in Ireland. Right, right. Uh, um, Like, if I think off the top of my head, Grabbers, Stitches, Shrooms was terrible. Mm. Um, There's a really good one now, if, you're in the, if you do like Irish horror. Yeah. Um, called Beyond the Woods. Beyond the Woods. That sounds familiar. Uh, it's on Amazon um, okay. from Sean Bratnock and he it's just it's a really good Irish horror okay and then of course the newest one that's out uh, The Unwelcome mm. if you haven't had a chance check it out it's pretty fucking good too but okay. other than that there's there's not many um, Kate Dolan done one called You're Not My Mother but it's kind of a thriller horror which was yeah. brilliant but like we didn't have any of that yeah. So yeah. when people were telling me about these indie gogos, I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about here?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's a different thing. I, I think it's a very like, you know, it's it's very U.S. like U.K. based. You know, like it's that 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 I can tell. Like I, I've obviously have heard of GoFundMe's, but normally you see them for like sick people or yeah, exactly. or things like that. Yeah, but yeah. I'd never heard them to make movies. I figure I always like I was a bit naive with it. I thought mm-hmm. you'd just go to say like production companies and be like, "There's my script, give me money." Yeah, right, right. And and you know, or the, like, or the likes of art council or stuff. Totally, and it can happen like that, but you know, it just I don't know. Like I, you know, I I figured out pretty early on that people aren't just going to hand you stuff. So I just started, you know, making things happen myself. And I like I've always worked outside the system like that. So you we've. You've got into it now. You're going into production for this. 
Mm. How how did you go about casting this? Because so you have probably one of the biggest names for a long time in horror in um, in Felicia Rose. Yeah, no, she was awesome. So um, Kevin Caliber and Ashley Undercuffler, they run a production company called Fifty Caliber Productions. I've known Kevin for years. So I brought him on uh, to produce and then uh, Ashley came on and they both also uh, were, one one played Frenzy, the other guy played Mac. And, she uh, was brilliant. Yeah, yeah I, 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 she was so good in it. And uh, uh, Kevin was good friends with Felissa. He'd worked with her a few times before. So he got her on board. And then, you know, Gregory had done the rewrite on it and Gregory's a fantastic actor. So I cast him as Travis. Um, Rachel Amanda Bryant, who I'd worked with in Death Day, I made her Shiloh. Um, and I think the only other one that we cast up front was uh, Toya Mormon, who is friends with John Reed, who is uh, also one of the producers. And then from there, we just kind of, you know, did auditions and picked people. Nice, nice. But like, I'd say for you, obviously, no disrespect to the rest of the cast, but when you bring in a name like Felicia Rose, who has who herself has a cult father, not even just from the movies herself. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, well known from Sleepaway Camp. She was in Terrifier 2 and things like that. And mm -hmm. Countless others. So that that was obviously going to bring in some fan base anyway. So it yeah. was a pretty smart move. Yeah, yeah. And we attached her, you know, in the in the middle of the crowd funder. So, you know, it did it did it did help for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, like it's smart marketing to an extent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and and she really turned out, you know, besides the business side, she's such a sweet person. Like, she's just so super nice. Like, that that's the thing I kept hearing about her over and over, that she's really nice, but you can't overstate it, like, just how nice she is. And then and then on top of that, you know, she's she's a really good actress. So it was yeah. just, it was, it was great to have her on. And, and she like, and she sets a good tone on the set, you know. She's under like underappreciated as an actress in, in mm -hmm. certain ones. Do you know, like, sure. so, so we've seen it over the years, say with the likes of Jamie Lee Curtis, who was a great actress, but yeah, because yeah. she was attached to horror films, she yeah. was overlooked in a lot of things. Totally. Now, obviously, this year she wins the Oscar, which yeah. is great for her. Again, I don't know if she was the best actress or supporting actress in that movie. Mm. You best believe I really marked out for her when she won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I think Felicia is another one of those. She's she's a really good actress, and you can see it in the horror films. Mm -hmm. But it's always you, you're never really gonna see her make too much ends into other things because people won't give her a chance. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. And like we've seen it, obviously Shelley Duvall was another one. Yeah. Um, no, not my favorite of actress in the world, but again, was typecast, didn't really move into other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, done Popeye, and that was horrendous. <laughs> not even Robin Williams could save that. Mm -hmm. But like, there are certain actresses that and actors that are attached to horror, and they just seem to stay there. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, and the thing like uh, like Felissa really whatever she's doing, she like she gets brings has joy for it. You know, yeah. and and you know what's really cool about some of these actresses, you know, like Felissa that came up in the '80s and then you know kind of like fell off a little bit in the '90s, and you know maybe they you know weren't doing so well or weren't working as much. But then like a really weird thing happened in like the mid aughts where like the horror conventions started ramping up more, especially in the states, and you know and these horror conventions would bring people, you know, like Felissa or like. Linnea Quigley or bring Stevens and they would bring them to these conventions and you know the actors could you know make money and sell their things and you know it's like it's become a like a like a circuit now you know like like Felicia's like year round like different places different conventions different like showings for sleepaway camp you know and then on top of that you know doing make, making movies and movies and movies yeah. very very busy guy there's a there's another actress that uh, funny enough it was only an episode a couple of weeks ago when I was talking to um, Lavari who was speaking so highly of Linnea mm, yeah, and it's yeah. great to see her starting to reemerge again and um, obviously we see Shelley Duvall coming back for Forest Hills 
Yeah. Um, and like it's great seeing these actors and actors coming back to the genre. Yeah, yeah totally. G- getting some new uh, new viewers on them. And like obviously we've seen it. The big one was um, Jamie Lee coming back to do Halloween. Yeah. But, like everyone's like, oh, it was great to see her back in it. She never really left it. To be fair. Yeah. 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 So like, like, like Heather Langkamp left um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then they brought her back for a new nightmare, which was which was brilliant. Hey, I love um, that one. Like, that that for me is probably the third best one in the franchise. Yeah, may, you know, I, I'd yeah. maybe go one than that, maybe, but I, but I like Ooh, those no. those two are my favorite. The first one. Oh no, that, that one. That, yeah. that that's a controversial pick now. <laughs> uh the first one really? No, no, no. Leaving out Dream Warriors. Oh, I, I mean, I like Dream Warriors. It's just not my favorite. When I was yeah, a kid, no, I, I, when I was a kid, I would have said it's my favorite. But looking back on it now, I think the filmmaking is stronger in the first one. Yeah, yeah. that and was the very that was that was the very first horror film I ever seen. Nightmare really? Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, I can totally understand that. Ele- I, I, re- 11, I remember eleven years of age. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing it in the theater and the being like, you know, I, I I mean, I, even, I, I loved it. Oh wow. Okay. Have you okay. Even got that one? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, it's great seeing these people coming back. Yeah, and, and like, for me, when I like, I'd heard obviously I'd heard I said I heard about this off a couple of actors and actresses saying that they've they've obviously heard from people that have worked on the set or yeah whatnot about how good this was going to be, and then the ad came out for it, and I was like, I'm sitting looking at it going, is that Felicia Rose? <laughs> And like I sat there as well when I watched Terrifier two last year, mm-hmm. and she popped up on that, and I was like, "Where the fuck is this coming from?" <laughs> but like, yeah, so you've gone through it. You've got a great cast. Everyone's assembled. So when when did shooting start? Um, oh man, we started in I, I think May uh, last year. You know, we sh- we shot in the bar set for seven days i believe and then about another six days six or seven days total like after that just like here and there so two weeks shoot really else. yeah really like what 14 days of like yeah i'm broken up you know so we did like six days on had a day off did two more days and then we're off for like a week and then did like a weekend and then came back like a month later and did another weekend the exteriors and stuff were uh, we had to uh, do on a different schedule for some of the actors' availabilities. So, let me ask you, that bar you shot in, is that a working bar? No, no, it was a set. Um, so oh, it was we, a set. Yeah, built built from scratch. Like, some of the, some of the wood panel was there, but uh, we built all the way around and extensions and then the, the production designer, Holly Rockwell, she designed it all, so she came in and you know built the bar and the shelves and you know dressed the whole thing. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I've done a previous episode with um, Tatiana Blichel, who was the creature designer for the main one. Oh, cool. Because she does all this, she does special effects as well. And she was saying, when you work in the likes of working bars, working restaurants, it can become very much harder to do certain scenes. Oh so yeah. That was gonna be my next question. If that was a working bar. How hard was the deep clean to get all the blood off? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, even not being a working bar, you still have to clean up after you're all done. And, uh, yeah. you know, we didn't have much money, so we didn't have, couldn't hire a crew. So it was like me and one of the other producers, Robert Bravo, just like on our hands and knees, cleaning blood, getting up on the ladder, cleaning it off the walls. Like, it was, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. You could see that in the film. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Um, I, I, I'm trying my hardest not to get into the film too much to throw spoilers out. Mm, mm, okay. Um, very strong story. Um, as it says on the letterbox review, um, the characters get very edgy, which would probably happen in real life. Oh, yeah. And how quick they start to turn on each other and stuff. Yeah. Because um, normally in, in horror films, you don't really see it playing out like that yeah so i was quite i was sitting there going oh he's done this well the like obviously the tetanus um you have the two the the two what would you say they're probably 
antagonists mm-hmm. of the crew inside. Um, obviously, she's getting more and more antsy about wanting to get out, and she knows what's coming. Yeah, yeah. But nobody knows what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, obviously, things happen, and and then <laughs> the reveal happens, and you're like, well. Um, but that build-up scene to the reveal uh, was was top quality. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really proud of that and the way the actors performed. And you know, we didn't have a lot of time to do that either. So it was like, you know, I mean, this whole movie, like uh, on this schedule for this kind of scope, like it was a lot. You know, so like when we were on stage, you know, there there were days where we were shooting 20 pages. You know, just because you know, we had to get through all the dialogue stuff because the Oh, the action stuff's going to take so much longer, you know. So it's just everything was like rush, 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 rush. But you know, we we got through it, and I think they performed really well. Absolutely, but um, like that that might be my favorite scene in the in the film. But obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who or what it is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, where he's on the ground, and you're like, well, um, that was that was quality. The noise is even. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, sound design is so important, especially on low budget movies. Like, the better you can make the sound, like, you know, the better you're going to be. But yeah, and I'm big on like, uh, like realistic, but like theatrical kind of sounds, you know, loud and crunchy. And you know, I like that yeah. stuff. And then obviously everything was practical. Yeah, yeah, for, for the most part, there's there's a couple of shots where there's a just a touch of like CG, like augmentation. So, you know, like, uh, there's a character shot and, you know, so like the, when the blood came out the back of their head, um, like you couldn't see it so much on the one side. So we put a little like splatter there, but it's like a split second. You can't see it. And there's another one where a character is ripped somewhere and there's a spurt of blood and it's real blood, but the, the initial spurt is a little bit of CG because the the timing just wasn't quite right. So we did a little tiny CG splurt and then the real blood comes up. Yeah, I I, yeah. I have a feeling I know what, what scene that was, but for the ninety nine percent of it, it was. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, the monster is a hundred percent real. There's no CG parts. It's all you know, actor in a suit and puppet I, stuff. I done I done my best not to tell them there was a monster, and then oh, you told them that I did it. Yeah. Well, I, I I have been advertising it as a monster movie. Well, I didn't do it. You okay. don't. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Well, then the, the 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 transformation scene is what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, it was brilliant. Um, some really cool death scenes. Yeah, um, yeah. And if, if you haven't guessed it, it's a horror film. People are going to die <laughs> somewhere along the way. Totally. Um, yeah. really, really enjoyed it. the dialogue between some of the people were brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um. Overall, very enjoyable, and I will watch it again. Oh, cool. Um, absolutely, will watch it again at some point. Yeah, it's like I said. I, I've never, you know, I've released a lot of movies, and like I haven't felt such a uh, like a support for a film before quite like this. You know, I'm. It, it just it feels it feels really well received in general. Yeah, like as I says to you, I'd heard off a few people, um, and then looking at the early reviews to it, I was like, "Well, this is going to be, um, this is going to be pretty good." Now I'm just going to check right now. I had it up, um, but my phone knocked it off. I'm going to have a look at the the IMDb or the letter or fucking Rotten Tomatoes. Letterbox. The Rotten Tomatoes. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Right, it. I don't think we're Rotten Tomato rated yet. I don't think we have enough reviews for it. No, uh, you haven't. I, I thought it might have been there, but it's 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty good for an indie, man. And 4.1 out of 5 on Voices from the Balcony. I'm not sure what that is. Mm, I'm not sure. I think that's just uh, a review. And then oh, it's, as, yeah, it's a review. Oh, is it? And then on Letterboxd, it, they've all been generally in and around 3.5 to 4.5 star. That's good. That's fine. I'll take that. I, I, I was very impressed. Um, now, yeah. I did talk to you off camera about some of the reviews that were left on Letterboxd and people were like, oh, it's it's this kind of horror, that kind of horror. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like horror, don't watch it. 
Don't review it. Don't be a fucking dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stand it. And I, I do sometimes... I don't know why I do it to myself. I do read the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and Letterboxd and stuff. And people yeah. being like, I don't like horror, so I'm giving it a one star. Go fuck yourself then. Yeah. Don't watch it. Don't review it. Why, why ruin it for somebody else that might look at this and go, oh, yeah, yeah. you gave it a one star, so I'm not going to watch it. Indie yeah. horror is hard enough as it is. It is. Without, I, without dickheads fucking... Yeah, I don't understand. Like, you know, I believe people have the right to say what they want to say, but at the same time, I just don't see why anyone would want to purposefully put out, like, hatred. You know, and, like, some of those one stars are, like, they're they're hateful, you know? Yeah. Like, if, I, you don't I mean, like, if, you don't, if you don't like the movie, that's fine. Yeah. Don't yeah. watch it again. Right. Right. And I understand putting out your rating, but you don't have to be a fucking dick about it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. What happened? I rate it one star. Why? I didn't really enjoy the movie. The premise wasn't good. The monster didn't look good. Simple fact. You don't have to go on a fucking tyrant raid. Right. And rip the movie asunder. Like, because... There are going to be people that'll sit and read them and go, nah, I'm not watching that. Yeah, 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 totally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I don't disagree. As I said to you, off, off camera, I was like, I, I did tend to go off on a rant when I get into reviews. Um, right. And, like, let's be fair, I, I, we have an episode on the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm. where I'm pretty sure we may or may not have broken the world record for swearing at how bad a movie was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do I, I'm quite fair in terms of sorry excuse me uh, what I write things mm-hmm. like I'll, I'll tell it outright if it's good or if it's bad right I've also been in the middle of an episode and told the director straight up that I, he, he asked me he's like did you like the movie no not really <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean that episode never actually made it to to air he turned around and said he didn't want to put out Aww. I was like I was like <laughs> okay I says that's that's fair, your own thing enough. you didn't want to put out um, yeah, yeah. but as I says, I really enjoyed this um, and what we do is on here so obviously Letterbox has 5 stars and 10, mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 on, on IMDb what we do is obviously being on the slab we have we call it uh, how many slabs we meet out of 5 right Right. so what I'll do is you're obviously the director so you're partial to it mm-hmm. but if you were to watch this movie right having not directed just being me sitting there mm-hmm. what would you rate it out of 5 Craving? Yeah. Honestly, this is where I just like to put people on on it on it because obviously you're part of Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. You know, three and a half. So I, I obviously uh, go ahead. If, 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 in you know, in the, like you know, if you're going from indie to you know studio level things, yeah, three and a half. I, like I think it's good. I, I, I think it's I think it's I maybe four. Yeah, I'll go four. I'll go four. So I was trying. I was. I was trying to be a little false humble, but I. <laughs> I, I really like the movie, so it's. It's a four. Yeah, uh, I sent you my review that I put up for you. Yeah. Um, where I gave it, I did give it a three and a half. There are some little things that kind of put it down for me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing major, just. Um, I'm not going to say them on air because I don't want people being turned off watching the movie. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but I would absolutely recommend people going to watch the movie. Um, yeah. It was it was very fun. Uh, great pacing to it. Um, as you said, the sound, the lighting, the quality of the picture, perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cast and the crew, or obviously, I can't say the crew because I don't know the crew. The right. cast in the movie were, were very, very good. The acting was good. Um, the characters were good. Some of them you couldn't; they were made to obviously not like them. Yeah. Uh, and some of them you felt sorry for. Totally. Uh, no, but I, as I says, yeah, three and a half for me. Like, it's been there hasn't been many fives given out. There's been a couple of couple of fours, but three and a half to four tends to be. That makes sense. Uh, about average. Um. But yeah, very enjoyable overall. Um, just before we wind down then tonight, um, as it says, do you want to pitch anything that you have going on or coming up? Sure, I, I'm uh, actually starting uh, my new, a new, my next movie follow up to uh, Craving. Uh, it's called A Hard Place. 
Um, it's another monster movie. Um, it's about a group of criminals on the lam that uh, end up in West Virginia, where they end up in the middle of this old feud between uh, uh, the monsters that rule the day and the creatures that rule the night. Like two brand new types of monsters that we haven't seen before. It's it's a much bigger movie than, than Craving. And uh, we're starting a crowdfunding portion for that in a couple of weeks. Nice. Uh, we'll certainly, if you send it on to me, we'll put it out there for you as well. Sure. Um, but as it says, very entertaining, folks. Go and watch it. Um, Jason, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on uh, and have a chat about the movie and other stuff in the middle. <laughs> um, and you're welcome to come back on any time. Oh, awesome. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah, it's not too bad. I, like, I know some people don't really like doing podcasts, especially if they're scripted and stuff. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to go offhand and just see where the conversation goes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, you get some random things come out on this show. Totally. Um, yeah. But, um, as it says, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. You're welcome to come back on absolutely any time you want. Uh, just drop us a message and we'll organise something. Um, and maybe when you're ready with the new one, We'll have you back to promote that. That'd be great. And um, yeah, so folks, that's been your Friday night uh, with Jason himself there. I've been the usual. (laughs) And I'll finish this out the same way I finish every Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. In the words of the great George A. Romero, stay scared. Mm.